You wanted it, you got it. Mike Tyson now has seven losses on his record. The seventh being from Jake Paul. So in this video, I'm going to break down my thoughts. As you guys see on the screen, Mike Tyson, he now, I'm not even going to say finish because they asked him if he was going to retire and he was making it sound like he has more in him. So I don't know if it'll be sanctioned exhibition or if he does continue to fight. So as it sits, Mike Tyson now has a record of 50 and seven. I want to know from you guys in the comments section, do you think this fight after watching it in hindsight should have been sanctioned as a pro bout? That's what I want to know from you guys. Now, I have a full-fledged breakdown on the channel, so I need you guys to watch that, thumb it up, share the video, and that's where I kind of give more of my thoughts on Jake Paul. This video, I want to talk about some different things and overall the experience. I think the user experience was pretty bad for this fight with Netflix. Netflix being a big company, you kind of expect the best of the best, especially since Netflix Every so often, they keep raising their prices per month. The user experience was poor. There were moments where it looked like it was shot with a potato and the quality dipped dramatically. And like during this, a lot of times it was happening during, during the Katie Taylor and Serrano fight. I couldn't even really see who was who. That's how bad the, the video and the visuals were degraded. They were so bad, de they were degraded so bad to the point where I couldn't even recognize who was who. You know, the resolution had been so choppy. Um, the buffering issues, things like that. So I think the fight was a commercial success, but not a long-term success. Netflix, if they want to stay in this space of boxing, my sport, you know, I'm the king of boxing, then I think they have to... They have to get better, you know, and it's their first time. So I can't, I would have expected more because I feel like this, would, this is what they did well. They did well with the promotion. Like they had a bunch of billboards and like boxing gloves punching into the ground and sculptures. They had all that type of stuff going to announce this fight. But on a technical aspect, they didn't have that going. So the fight, I, I really didn't enjoy the card. Like, I've seen so many. See, I'm not a rookie either. I'm not new to this. I'm not a novice when it comes to boxing. So I've been to several fights. I've covered big fights like Mayweather McGregor. You know what I mean? And it's funny, speaking of Mayweather McGregor, old media constantly complains about Floyd Mayweather, like when he was fighting Logan Pauls and Conor McGregor. But all of Floyd fights, to me, have been better than what I've seen in the Jake Paul and the Mike Tyson fights. Like all of his, his whole career has been better than that. Um, it was a flat fight. It didn't really have any like meat and potatoes. Like what's your biggest takeaway? Like what is this fight known for? Now Tyson has seven losses. I don't even see how it was sanctioned for real, for real. You know, it was sanctioned. It wasn't three minute rounds. It was eight. It was only an eight rounder instead of 10 or 12, which you would get in a championship fight. You had 14 ounce gloves at heavyweight instead of the 10 ounce gloves that they normally would probably wear. Right. So it had these special rules. Now Mike has another loss on his record. And what was the real gain? I, I feel like financially, there might have been some gain for all those involved. You know, of course, Jake Paul and Tyson and maybe Netflix. But I'm not a fan of that when it puts a black cloud over the sport of boxing like that. I don't feel like that's a good trade off at what cost, you know. Like if you came up on some money, but then you had to do something crazy in order to get it like it might not be worth it all money is not good money like i'm not going to 
go against my beliefs and morals and principles and virtues for money. And I just feel like this was the ultimate cash grab. And here's what I've noticed in the sport is like, you just ultimately want to have a good product. The better the product, that's how you get long standing comeback customers and get people to buy into it. You don't want to be just like a once and done. Like, I, I don't know how Jake Paul even follows up this fight because you had a person in boxing who's probably the second most noticeable or known fighter behind Muhammad Ali. So you had all the star power to sell this vehicle. You gathered everybody for a given moment and got everybody's attention. And then I don't feel like people were ultimately um, like hyped. Like there's fights again. I'm different. I'm not a casual fan, a casual watcher. I cover the sport of boxing. There's certain fights where like, let's say Gervonta Davis when he fought Leo Santa Cruz, I couldn't even sleep. That's how real boxing and great boxing events will have you feeling. It was just like such a crazy knockout and people were recycling and replaying and you want to see it and you, you almost want to watch it again. And it, it's like you have adrenaline, like true adrenaline coursing through your veins after a crazy fight. Like you're just so hyped. And like me, through that surge of adrenaline, it's really hard for me to sleep. Like I have issues in general where like insomnia, but especially when you watch boxing and it's lit. I kid you not <laughs> with this fight with Mike Tyson and Jake Paul, I went to bed like midnight, which is early for me. So I watched it and it was just like, eh. And I just like went to bed shortly after. There was nothing. There was no real thrill. There was no like everlasting feeling. It was just I watched it and I'm like, ah, that's what I expected. And it, it probably was actually worse than what I expected because there were no knockdowns. Some people are arguing, saying, oh, Jake Paul carried him and he spared Mike Tyson out of respect. But just think about this. Jake Paul didn't spare anybody else. Anderson Silva's a legend just to a different sport, MMA, but he dropped him when he had a chance to, right? He knocked out Tyron Woodley and Ben Askreen and these other guys. He dropped Nate Diaz. So why do you spare Mike Tyson only? And again, if the two combatants are getting $60 million, I think the fans want to see a show. So it's like, why make a match if one person is going half throttle instead of full throttle and then the other person is at such an advanced age where they can't get off the blocks? Like Mike Tyson looked terrible. He looked terrible. He looked like a regression from the Roy Jones Jr. fight for sure. Like, I don't know what happened in those four years outside of just regular aging but it didn't even look like the roy jones exhibition mike tyson because he was at least throwing some mean shots and maybe it's just father time in four more years we've heard about mike tyson having medical emergencies and the fight got postponed for that we've seen him in wheelchairs so i don't know what's going on with his health he had a knee brace in the fight i mean all of this spells trouble and it just was a weird fight. Like there was no, no real gain. It was just, it was ra rather sad to see, to be honest. Mike Tyson looked very pedestrian. Like he was nervous almost. Like he didn't know, like Jake Paul was trying to outbox him. Was it his, his team was like urging him to get the knockout. See, and that's the other thing with people saying that Jake Paul carried him. His team wasn't saying to carry him. His team was like, knock him out. He's slow. He's not moving and things like that. So I don't really know. I don't know how to feel there. But Mike Tyson, he didn't even look like, he definitely didn't look like the Mike Tyson of old, vintage Mike Tyson. And after every sequence, he was just like backing up and 
He was chewing on his gloves, biting his gloves. I'm hungry. I want some leather. I like it tastes like a Van der Holyfield ear. Like, and I'm like, what? What am I watching? Like, I've never. I don't know if he needs some Ritalin. I don't know what was going on, but I've never seen a fight where the man was chewing on their gloves after every sequence, you know? And it looked like a real wake up call when he got Jake Paul landed a nice right. And then Mike Tyson was just like jarred from it and chewing on his gloves. And then post fight, he said that he had a biting fixation. <laughs> I'm the best ever. I want I want this glove. I'm gonna eat this glove like Linux. I don't know. It's just like I'm glad we're over it. To be honest, it's great the fighters got paid, but to me, that's just. Of course, you're a prize fighter. You fight for a prize, so you're gonna get paid. I'm not really bothered about that. It's just I feel. This like Mike kind of sold out like he sold out his career like you really got seven losses and a loss to Jake Paul like you look at it again all of his last fights his lat like look at this is his record now his last three fights of his career are all L's and then he had one win versus this Clifford fella and then before was the Lennox Lewis fight and speaking of Lennox Lewis like no shade to Lennox but I told you they waited 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 post-prison Tyson wasn't the same as before he went in and that's why you look at the the back half of his career like just that's one two three four five he lost four of his last five fights and that's why it was so I'm not even gonna say funny but it was just like amusing to me that so many people were rocking with Mike Tyson like yes you respect him yes he's a legend yes he was known for these things but there's a lot of athletes if you remove them from that's like let's take a wild animal right take a wild animal when they're young like pretty young right you remove them from the wild and you domesticate them and then you have like somebody has them the the wild tiger at their house so they feed them they give them like slabs of meat the tiger is just sitting pretty. It's learned to really like have human interaction and humans pet it. It's domesticated. And then you take that same tiger and then you throw them back in the wild with the real wild animals that never left. So hyenas and lions and tigers and elephant and they're back in the wild that same tiger in my opinion it's not going to be the same because it's so far removed from those wild politics like it's you took it and domesticated it. and that's what i seen with this mike tyson fight like bro he's a podcaster he's been in the hangover movies he had a broadway show and people were like no nah, but it's mike tyson still right and i i just didn't understand it and it was again, it became this big spectacle and people wanted to see it. And then we tune in and then what? So you just like I said, now you got seven losses on your career, one to a former Disney star, <laughs> a YouTuber. And, you know, Mike Tyson, he didn't look vintage. And I don't understand this whole wind back the clock theory where you think a person is going to damage their body, poison their body, drink, you know, do drugs, things that Mike Tyson is openly stated and then just reverse it and then fight somebody who's much younger by 30 plus years and is bigger at that point and has at least been consistent in the sport and people are the only thing they could say is oh but it's still tyson so not surprising check out my full breakdown you know let's get back to some other boxing